Hello Internet! Welcome to another game development tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to make a game like Breakout. So the game is going to look like this. It's just a classic Breakout game. So if you haven't watched my previous tutorial how to make a game for Android, iOS and web, then go ahead and watch that first because I'm not going to explain the basic things in this tutorial. So after you create your breakout game, you will be able to publish it for Android and iOS. Just watch the part 4 of the how to make a game tutorial which will teach you how to publish the game for, for Android and iOS. So basically this is the game folder. Inside the assets folder I have three sprites, the ball, the brick and the paddle. I'll put a link in the description to download this game folder. Now before we go to the code of the game, let's look at the algorithm of the game. So I have broken down the logic of the game into six steps and I've written it in plain English. And this is called an algorithm of a game. It's a really nice idea to write an algorithm of a game before you attempt to create a game. So this basic six steps explains what all needed to be done for creating the game. Now let's look at the code of the game. It's really similar to the game that we made in the previous tutorial, but I have changed the dimensions of the stage. So in the preload function, I have done all the scaling and I have loaded all our sprites. And in the create function, I have, I had given it a background color and I had set up the physics. And now let's analyze the code step by step. So step one, create the battle. And then apply physics to it and don't allow it to go out of the stage. So here I am creating my paddle. I am positioning it at the center of the stage horizontally and its y, y coordinate is 500. Next I am applying physics to it and I am also setting a physics property that is, that is immovable to true. Uh, the reason why I am doing this is because by setting immovable to true the paddle doesn't move down when it collides with the ball. Only the ball goes up. So we are done with create the paddle and apply physics to it. And the next thing we want to do is don't allow it to go out of the stage. So this statement make sure that the paddle doesn't go out of the stage. And one more thing I'm doing here is I'm setting the anchor to 0.5 and 0.5, which is at the center. The anchor is similar to the instance point. In I'm just doing it because I want the paddle to be exactly at the center of the stage horizontally. So step two is create the ball and then apply physics to it and don't allow it to go out of the stage. So in the code, I'm adding, I'm creating the ball on top of the paddle, then I'm enabling physics for the ball, and I'm set, giving it a bounce so that whenever it collides with other physical body, it actually bounces back. And then I'm setting its anchor to 0.5, just like we did before. And then I'm making sure that the ball doesn't go out of the stage. 
So basically what this does is whenever the ball collides with a world bound, the ball just bounces back. But there's actually an exception with this case. Even though the ball can't go out of the stage, it should be able to go down. So that means we don't have to check the collision with the world bound when the ball is going down the screen. So to do that, I'm going to set game.physics.arcade.checkcollision.down equal to false. Step 3 is to create the bricks group, apply physics to it and create all the f bricks using the, this group. So groups are something that I haven't covered in my previous tutorial. So, th so the reason why we use group here is because we want to create more than one brick. That is, we need lots of bricks in our game. So the syntax for creating a group is game dot add dot group and it's st stored in a variable called bricks. And then I'm applying physics to it. This is how you apply physics to a group. Just set enable body to true and the body type to physics.arcade. Once we create the bricks group, we can go ahead and create all the bricks onto the stage. Since we want to create more than one brick, we will be using a for loop for creating it. So this is how we create a sprite from a group. Name of the group dot create the x coordinate the y coordinate. The number of bricks created will depend upon the condition given in the for loop. Here I have y less than 4 and x less than 5, x less than 15. So there will be 4 rows and 15 columns of bricks. So you can see that there are 4 rows and 15 columns in a game. So now if I'm on 5 or 6 rows, I just have to change that number to 6. So right now, there are 6 rows. And after I create the brick, I'm setting its immovable property to true so it doesn't move when, when it collides with the ball. The next step is to handle the input. So I made the controls in such a way that when the player touches on the right side of the screen, the paddle moves towards right of the stage. And when the player touches the left side of the stage, the paddle moves towards the left side of the stage. So what we have to do is when player touches on the screen, first we have to find out whether he touched on the left hand side or the right hand side of the screen. If it's on the right, then move the paddle right. If it's on the left, then move the paddle left. And if the ball is still on the paddle when the player touches on the screen, then you don't have to move the paddle. All you have to do is just shoot the ball. And when the player stops touching the screen, or when he takes his finger off the screen, then you have to stop the paddle from moving. So, when the player touches on the screen, I'm calling this function handle on down. And when the player takes his finger off the sc screen, I'm calling the function handle on up. So, in handle on down, what I'm doing is, first I'm checking if the ball is on the paddle. If the ball is on the paddle, 
I'm just shooting the ball by giving it a velocity and setting ball on paddle to false. And if the ball is not on the paddle, then I have to find out whether the touch is on the left side of the stage or right side of the stage. And if it's in the left side of the stage, then I'm setting the velocity to a negative value so that the paddle moves towards the left of the stage. If the touch is in the right side of the stage, then I'm giving the velocity a positive value so that the paddle moves towards the right of the stage. And when the player takes his finger from the screen, I'm stopping the paddle by setting its velocity to zero. The final step is to handle collision. I have to check for the collision between the ball and the paddle and the ball and the brick. And one more thing to note is that if the ball is on the paddle, then we don't have to check for the collisions. All we have to do is set the coordinates of the ball so that it's on top of the paddle. So in the update function, I'm checking if the ball is on the paddle by checking if this variable is true. If it's true, that is if the ball is on the paddle, then I'm just setting the coordinates of the ball so that it's just above the paddle and I don't have to check for any collision and else if this condition is not true then we'll have to check for two collisions one between ball and brick and the other between ball and the paddle so if the ball hits the paddle I'm calling the function ball hit paddle and if the ball hits the brick then I'm calling the function ball hit brick so when the ball hit the brick the only thing I'm doing is just kill that brick so that's what happened when you play the game when a ball hits a brick that brick just gets destroyed the collision between the ball and the paddle is a little more complicated we have to set the velocity of the ball based on where it hit on the paddle. So to do that, first we find the difference between the x coordinate of the ball and x coordinate of the paddle. And we store it in a variable called different. And then we multiply that difference with a number to set the velocity of the ball. So the velocity of the ball depends upon the difference between the, the x coordinate of the paddle and the x coordinate of the ball. Or basically, the velocity of the ball depends upon where the ball hits on the paddle. The reason why we have this two if statements are because when the paddle hits, the reason why we have this two if statements is because when the ball hits, on the left side of the paddle it should move towards the left side of the paddle so its velocity should be set as negative so we are multiplying the difference with negative 10 and when the ball hits the right side of the paddle then it should move towards the right of the stage so we are multiplying it with positive 10 so yeah that's how the game works if this video helped you go ahead and give a thumbs up for the video and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified when I upload my new videos. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next tutorial.